Hello everybody and welcome to a screencast about Clojure's thread macros. Today we'll be talking about the thread first macro and the thread last macro. During the screencast I'm going to cover why I think thread macros are interesting, how you use them and a little bit about how they work and then a short discussion about when I think they're applicable. This screencast is aimed at people who are newcomers to the Clojure language and my guess is that if you're intermediate or advanced that you're probably not going to pick up too much so you can hop over this one. Great with that said let's get started. So why thread macros? Early on in my closure journey uh, thread macros was something that I hadn't discovered yet. It took me a while before I discovered their existence and even after I had discovered that they existed it took me a little bit longer to actually understand how they worked and how I could use them. Uh, part of the reason for that is uh, the documentation. Let me show you the uh, API for the thread first and thread last macro. Let's read this. So thread first threads the expression through the forms, inserts x as the second item in the first form, making a list of it if it is not a list already. If there are more forms, inserts the first form as the second item in the second form, etc. Yeah, so if you're anything like me that's a little bit hard to understand. Uh, I started to grasp both of these when I saw it used in examples and uh, thread first and thread last was actually one of my closure eureka moments when I got it. It was one of those happy moments on my journey to really starting to love closure. So I don't think that I'm going to be able to give you that eureka moment during this video but uh, fingers crossed I might be able to set you on the journey to getting your own eureka moment around thread macros. Okay, and what I'm going to be doing in this screencast is doing some live coding to uh, give some examples and explain how I'm thinking. So that's going to be a little bit exciting for me because anything could happen. So, why thread macros? What they're there for really is to increase code readability. That's their, their main job in life. And uh, instead of talking about how that works, let's just get in and give a demonstration with some live coding. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to write a, a little function that's going to do some text manipulation, some sequence based manipulation using the thread last macro. So the first thing I'm going to do is slurp in a file that we can start to manipulate. So let's go back to the internet and do a search for a file. Uh, a book or something would be good. Let's get Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Can we find that as a text file? Should I just go to the galaxy.txt. This looks like it could be the whole book actually, so that's great. Let's copy that URL and paste it in and evaluate that form. This could take a little while, oh, not too long. Okay, so now we have the whole book of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy as a string. Perfect. So now we want to do some processing on that. So let's use the thread last macro, take the text. And the first thing we're going to want to do is to split this into individual words so we can manipulate those. So let's use the regular expression sequence function which takes a regular expression pattern and matches it against the string and pulls out all of the individual uh, strings that match that pattern. And we're just going to say give us all of the characters that match the word special case with a plus and let's execute that. Okay so now we have all of the words separate in a, in, separated into a list just what we want so slash w matches on word characters so it's the equivalent of writing uh, let's see if we can write the equivalent it'll be something like a to z a to z and I think 0 to 9 plus does that give us the same yeah, you see that gives us the same result. So that's what slash w, it's just a shortcut for saying all characters that are words. So it doesn't match on um, commas, spaces, etc. So it's going to give us a nice split in a quite an easy way. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to find out the most used word in this book. What's the most common word? So closure comes with a built in function called frequencies, which takes, oh, let's give us a little bit of space here which takes a, a list of uh, entities and spits out, as you can see here, a map 
where the keys are the entities and the values are the frequencies, the number of times the, that that word occurs. So if we want to find the most used word, I guess we're going to have to sort this because maps are unsorted. So if we sort that, what do we get? Now we have a list of vectors, but it's the default sort for that map was sorting based on alphabetical order of the key. And we don't want that. We actually want to sort by the numerical order of the value. So let's switch to using the sort by function and sort by value and see what we get there. Okay, so that's right, but it's backwards. We actually want to see the most used words, not the least. So let's reverse that list. Enter, and there we go. So the the most frequently used word in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, perhaps unsurprisingly, is the word the. But that's actually a little bit boring because in most English language texts uh, over a certain size, the most common word is always going to be the. So let's see if we can do something a bit cleverer. And let's see if we can get rid of the common words and see which one is the most common. So we're going to define common words. And this time, we're going to use the thread first macro. So we're going to slurp in. And let's go back to the internet and see if we can find a list of common English words. Most common words in English, common words list as a comma separated. This looks perfect. So let's grab this URL, pop back into here. And what are we going to do? So it's comma separated, so we can use closure string split function, closure string slash split. And this one starts with a the string, and then you pass in the delimiter that you're going to split on. So let's split based on the string and see what that gives us. OK, so that's given us, <coughs> excuse me, a, a vector of all of the common words. Perfect. But if we're going to remove them, we'd really like that to be a set. So let's then pass it to the set function. And now back in this function, we can just say remove common words. Let's rerun it. OK, now it's saying I is the most common word, followed by S. Just grab a drink of water. My mouth is getting dry, excuse me. OK, so I think what's happening here is our reg regular expression is not correctly splitting out the word. So if we use a word or an apostrophe. Let's run that. OK, so that's got rid of the S. Why is I not working? What did we get here? Was I not in the common words? I is there, but it's lowercase. OK, so all of these words are lowercase. So maybe what we should do is before we remove the common words, we should we can map through the list of all of the words and use closure string dot. Oh, I did it the wrong way around. It should be closure dot string slash lower case. Did that work? Yes. OK, so now we found that the most common word in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is Arthur, followed by Ford, followed by Zayfod. If you've read the book, I don't think that's going to surprise you. Deep is in here. OK, so that's kind of cool. Let me take another drink of water. So that's an example of both thread first and thread last. But let me explain to you why that's increased the readability. Let's write the exact same function, but this time let's do it without using the thread first macro. So let's first do copy and paste a little bit. Let's first do a reseek on the text. Then what is it we did next? Then we did the map. Closure.string slash lowercase percentage. OK, and then we do remove common words. 
what do we do next? Then we run frequencies. Then we sort by, if I can type, sort by the value. And finally, we do the reverse. Now let's add a lot of brackets at the end. Let's see if we can get it back to blue. And let's run that one. OK, so that gives us exactly the same result. So you see that the thread last uh, macro is not changing the behavior of the code in any way. All it's doing is changing the formatting. So this is a standard Lisp uh, prefix formatting where if you're reading this code, you have to start with the innermost brackets and realize, OK, so first we're doing a regular expression sequence on the text, and then we're mapping the lowercase, and then we're doing removing the common words, etc., etc., and you kind of read it backwards. But if you're anything like me and an standard English language reader, you're much more used to reading text from left to right, top to bottom. And that's exactly where this thread blast comes into play. So that's why. To me, this is much easier to think of both when I'm writing it and when I'm reading it or reading somebody else's code. So that's why I think these macros are useful. It's all about readability. How does it work? How should you think about what's happening here? So let's have a try at explaining that. So let's copy the the final version of our function down here. Here's how I think about thread last. I think of it a lot like the Unix pipe command. I don't know if you're familiar with Unix, but it's a way of piping the output of one process into as the input of another process. And that's basically what's happening here. There's a, there's a common trick that they say is, is useful for beginner users of the thread first and thread last micros, and that's to use three commas to indicate the last position where the pipe is being piped into. So, so if you look at this, text is actually being piped into this position, so the last position in this function. And then the output of the, the regular expression sequence is being piped into this position of the map, and it's being piped into this position of the remove, and it's being piped into this position of the frequencies, and it's being piped into this position of the sort by value. So it's always the last argument passed into each function. So it just gets passed down the chain, piped through. And if we do the same for our thread first example, let me copy that one. Just do the formatting. And the difference here is that instead of being put in the, if we did thread last, it would be coming in there. But this isn't thread last, this is thread first, which means that we're actually piping into the first argument position, which actually makes a big difference with split, because split is expecting the string in the first position. If we change this to a thread last, it's going to say, no, you can't do that, it cannot be cast to string cannot be cast to regex pattern. Whereas if we run as a thread first, works perfectly. And with a set, because the set is only taking one argument, it doesn't really matter if it's a thread first or a thread last, it makes no difference to it, to it. So that's a little bit about how you use it and how you should think about it when you're using it. And I think it's perfectly fine when you're, you're learning to actually leave these commas in the code just to help help remind you, OK, that's the last position because it's thread last, and that's the first position because it's thread first. But how is this actually working under the covers? So it's a macro. Our macros are Clojure's superpower. They're a way of being able to manipulate the language with the language to do all sorts of crazy and powerful things. And they say with great power comes great responsibility, and that's definitely the case when it comes to macros. So if you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend writing too many macros to start with if you can avoid it. But understanding how they work is very useful because you'll be making use of a lot of built-in macros. So let's have a little look by using closure walk macro expand all and pass in 
this little function that we created here and see what actually happens to the code at compile time because macros are evaluated by closure at compile time and we can see if we run this that it actually spits out reverse sort by val free so it's spitting out the same code that we wrote when we didn't use uh, the, the thread last macro so that's all it's doing it's it's a manipulation of the ordering of the code at compile time so we get to read it in a nice readable way and Clojure gets to process it in the lispy way that it's expecting uh, there's a lot more that you we could talk about macros but uh, I'm going to leave it right there for now okay so when should you be using thread first and thread last uh, in terms of when do you use one or the other the common the common rule of thumb that people talk about is if you're doing manipulations on sequences that it's almost always the thread last that you'll want to be using and if you're doing manipulations on objects if you're doing getters and setters on objects then it's going to be the thread first that you need because they often need uh, the argument to be passed into the first position so I actually find myself using thread last quite a bit more than thread first but just because you can use it should you use it all the time in my code I actually find myself using it quite a lot because like I said I find this code much more readable than this code however if you come from a lispy background or you come from a culture where you read text backwards perhaps you find this more readable and of course if you do then you wouldn't switch to using the thread last because it's all about readability but I would imagine that most people would find this a lot easier to think about and reason about than this version so use it when but let's think about the pros and cons of using it because of course not everything is butterflies and roses and that's also the case for, for these macros one thing that you can do very easily when you you're writing in the standard lispy way is just highlight a particular set of forms so in this case the the yellow parenthesis form and just evaluate that bit to see okay what happens at that stage whereas if you if we wanted to evaluate that you see that we can't because this isn't actually a valid form it needs an extra bracket here and if we put an extra bracket here we break the formatting for these however there is a workaround because Clojure has a comment reader macro which says don't run this form that follows me so if we put those on all of those and then evaluate it's the equivalent of evaluating the, the yellow brackets and the cool thing about this which you can't do easily with this one is you can <clears throat> choose pick and choose which ones you're going to run so in that case we're still running the frequencies but we've skipped over removing the common words and you can do that in any combination so what started off as a con for the thread last macro has actually turned out to be something that's just as flexible or more so than when we're doing it in a non thread last way so that's kind of cool is there anything else we should think about when it comes to pros and cons <clears throat> I can't think of anything right now and um, I think I covered all the, the cases that I wanted to um, so yeah that was thread macros in closure hopefully through the examples or what I've been saying it's a little little bit clearer uh, go out there and practice it see how you use it in different cases ah there was one more thing I wanted to talk about and that was what happens if you need to mix and match thread first and thread last how well does that work so we can try that and if you're if you're starting with a thread first as we are in this case then it's very easy to switch out to a thread last all you need to do is switch to the thread last and change in this, this isn't a great example because set works with either thread first or thread last error while reading I missed a bracket so that worked perfectly fine so if you start with the thread first you can always add in as many thread last so if you have individual lines where you need a thread last and not a thread first that works really well however 
if you uh, if it's, let's say that we wanted to suddenly do this closure string split so instead of doing a regular expression sequence we wanted to do a split split is expecting first but we're passing in last so this isn't going to work and we can't unfortunately just do this this is going to blow up string cannot be classed to function however we can save ourselves with a little bit of trickery using anonymous functions the great thing about anonymous functions is that you get to choose where you place the argument so in this case we can say pass in the argument there so now if we run this okay but we probably want it to be the space so everywhere there's a space it's given us a different result but I guess it's because this split based on space is not working quite as well as our resequence <clears throat> but the result isn't important what's important is that you understand that let me clear that so we can see the other one so if you have a thread first and you want to include a thread last no problem you just add it here and you can do as many of those as you need or even group them with one thread last and if you start with a thread last then you can't hop in with a thread first but you can trick closure by using the anonymous function and passing the argument into the position that you need it. Great, so that's about it for thread match grows. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you again soon. Cheers.